for the very early show of faith in this film. I'll tell you something you might not know, Justin Wilkes, who was had just been hired as the head of Imagine Docs, uh, Betsy and I met with him uh, just a couple months after RBG came out, said we had something to pitch him, and this was the pitch. We were at a little outdoor uh, cafe, because this was before COVID, uh, and we sit down, we're all nervous, and we look at Justin and we say, Julia Child, and Justin says, Yes. <laughs> that, was the, that was the pitch for the film. We hope you enjoy it. We hope it expands your understanding of cuisine. We hope it makes you think about France and learn something about the early days of television. But most of all, what we want to bring you with this film, I can say in three words, they are in French, joie de vivre. Please enjoy, and we'll see you after for Q&A. Thank you all for Uh, thank you so much for staying for this amazing Q&A. We're so lucky we have Julie Cohen joining us again. Um, yeah, so what do you guys think of the movie? I'm hungry. I was just going to say, yeah. Yeah, it's, it definitely, you leave this in your, at least we're in, in LA, there's so many great places to eat, so stick around and watch movies, but then go eat. Um, so, Tell us a little bit about kind of how this movie came about. Uh, you, were, you mentioned a little bit in the intro that you kind of pitched it, but how did the idea that even come about? Yeah, um, you know, it came out following the release of um, RBG, our documentary about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, not surprisingly, the concept of doing films about other amazing women was both in our mind and frankly presented itself to us as uh, dozens of people with, uh, who had written books about various women, sometimes women themselves, all kinds of situations where people were like, oh, do, how about doing a knock on this woman and that woman? And we're considering all these people. We love the idea of it, like telling stories of groundbreaking, glass ceiling, shattering, iconic, cool women seems incredible. And um, when some Julia Child-related authors uh, came to us with that, um, with the Julia Child idea, we sort of started talking it through as we had with, as I say, literally dozens of other people, and we were like, wait a second, that would be like amazing. I mean, first of all, we didn't know that much about our story, but as we started to learn about it, it seemed like there was so much narrative. It had a feminist love story in it, which we loved, and it was really the food that made us want to do it. Like, it was so different. You know, obviously, the way Julia Child changed culture was so different than how Justice Ginsburg did, uh, uh, but, was, but was actually, it was like more important than it seems at first glance. Betsy and I had a uh, cross-town bus ride where we just started talking about all of the disgusting food that we ate as kids, kind of like before Julia Child's influence had really swept across the world. Both our lovely mothers, may they rest in peace, were not great cooks. Um, you know, my mom, I feel bad saying it, but like my mom used to serve, like there was nothing that she made was that was good. Yeah. And she used to serve, and yet she was the cook in the house. Like yeah. that's, you know, and she used to serve one of her big meals was like spaghetti with ketchup. Oh. Um, which honestly is not bad. Uh, with, uh, <laughs> with a little uh, Heinz ketchup on it, but still, like come on. We're, we're like, it, it just made us realize how much the world has changed that it seemed, that seemed like an acceptable thing that one would do with one's children. Yeah, what, watching the movie, um, I just started to think there was there's one point where they talk about kind of her being important and kind of even just getting people to think about cooking. And so our grocery stores are totally different than they were back then. Grocery stores are, have changed so much, yeah. again, in a way that I remember. I mean, we love the scene in the film where she's like holding up an artichoke and saying like, don't be afraid, this yeah. is an artichoke. Yeah. Because, you know, something that we all grew to love, but at the time, like iceberg lettuce was your choice of lettuce. You know, produce was so bad, like just there was so much that wasn't good. And realizing how much Julia impacted that, not just about cooking, but about eating. Just the idea that like, no, having good food can be amazing and important and a way to bring people together. And just even the whole French cultural thing of savoring your meal and making that a central part of your evening and of your daytime. Just like it was a great idea to bring to this country. 
Yeah, I mean, okay, so talking about pleasure and joy, um, this film tackles a little bit about Julia's sex life, which is not something that I think a lot of people ever thought about even. So what, how yeah. is that important to you? You know, I don't think we expect, we don't think people expected to come into a documentary about Julia Child and see a nude photo of her, and frankly, we're kind of, I'm proud it's there. Um, you know, we do, as I say, love it as a feminist love story, um, but also the idea, you know, the way that sex is depicted in the movies often, or talked about in the movies, um, is often, like, at least the woman in a sex situation has to be really young and really, like, a sex bomb, like, the hottest thing in the world. And, you know, that's not actually always how sex is in real life. Like, no, actually middle-aged people who aren't supermodels also have sensual pleasure. And that's actually also an important part of life. So, in our mind, like, yes, this is a documentary, but I really like to think of it as a, as a date movie, too, and a romantic comedy. And the sort of giving Julia her sexuality felt like a little bit of, you know, like a little bit subversive, maybe. I mean, I don't really know what to say politically about uh, the inclusion of the pear tart in that, in that scene, but, like, certainly the connection of food to sex was true in Julia and Paul's life. It comes up in the movie, uh, when, when we went and started, inter when we went to France in the fall of 2019 and started interviewing French people about food, this is organic. We did not plant to them like, oh, talk about food and sex. If you interview a French person about food, I guarantee you within three sentences, they're going to be talking to you about sex. Like it happened a number of times and we found it, you know, enlightening and amusing and uh, included in the film. Yeah, I mean, the two go together, right? Um, okay, I'm going to, uh, so I'm just going to read this off because I think this is incredible. But Julia, obviously, is such a pop icon. We all know that, especially after watching this. Um, so she's everywhere. This uh, this is just a short list of things that uh, barely scratch the surface. She has a rose named after her. She has a postage stamp. She was posthumously inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. She has a Peabody Award. She has a bunch of Emmys, National Book Award. She's received the French Legion of Honor, Presidential Medal of Freedom. She's received 10 honorary direct, uh, doctorates, which is pretty crazy. And then, you know, Jean Stapleton played her in the uh, stage play, Meryl Streep played her in the movie. Um, she's been parodied on Sesame Street and on uh, SNL, obviously. And then also twice on RuPaul's Drag Race. Did you know that? I did not know that last yeah. one. Twice on RuPaul's Drag Race. Cool. So. Um, my question for you, besides just wanting to share how awesome Julia Child is and what she's done, when did you first uh, know or hear about Julia, like in your personal life, and what did you think of her before, and how did this movie kind of change your perspective on her? Yeah, you know, so like anyone who, I was born in the 60s and grew up mostly in the 70s, I was absolutely familiar with Julia Child, the television character. I watched her. Um, Interestingly, I didn't really watch her for the food or the cooking. I just liked her as a character. Like, she was such a ham. She was so funny and amusing. And she seemed kind of mom-like to me. It was like, oh, she's cool. Like, I like, I like this performer. Um, but my the main thing that stuck with me over the decades about Julia was, I'm sad to say, actually Dan Aykroyd's SNL impersonation. And I think that's true of a lot of people. And while it is funny, and we were pleased to find that audio of Julia saying how much she enjoyed it and hearing from other people that she would, like, pull out the VHS tape <laughs> at uh, dinner parties, like, you know, we get that she thought it was hilarious. But the problem is that ultimately it is a somewhat uh, minimizing and trivializing depiction of this person who can be thought of as, like, a little bit of a joke. And I think looking into her story and thinking about how she changed things in this country made us realize, like, no, actually what she did was quite important. And it's, you know, I mean, there is a problem with that on gender stuff. Like, sometimes women's accomplishments end up being a little minimized, and it's easier to think of someone as a joke than as someone who actually really made a difference. We've been really pleased in recent weeks, um, as part of the pre-promoting for this film, 
um, that we've actually been talking to a lot of people in the professional food world today and have been really fascinated and blown away by how universally she's revered in the food world. Like they don't, like food people don't think of Julia as the Saturday Night Live skit. They've all got mastering. They all think it helps, you know, holds up. We actually were interviewed by a French chef today who talked about, you know, who I would say was probably around 70 years old, who talked about how strong the technique that's listed in mastering is. So. Uh, I think the main thing that the experience of working on the film gave us was just understanding that she's really important and she really changed the world. And the fact that that's all about food, you know, is just good. Yeah. She, so, you know, Julia is one of those people, obviously, you know, she's not a joke, but people have kind of this, like, everybody loves Julia Child and they have their kind of way of talking about yeah, Julia Child. Also, the jo voice. So makes I was, it, that's that makes what it I was very mimicky of all. So yeah, you but like, in, in the film, it comes up so many times where people aren't even trying. They just, they just, just slip do. in the Julia yeah. voice. Yeah. What, like, did that surprise you? That... No, you know, actually, I will say for every interview, we asked people to do an impersonation, and they all did, but except I think maybe Jose Andres, like, refused. And even the <laughs> refusal was kind of funny, and we thought about including that. In the end, we thought it wasn't necessarily because we'd let it kind of come in organically. Like, people just, uh, people like to do the voice. You, you mentioned Julia Child, and someone usually answers you in the voice. Mm -hmm. So spending so much time with her on this project, did you find yourself slipping into Julia voice ever? Do you have a Julia impression? <laughs> um, I mean, I could do it like, I'm Julia Child! Um, but no, I never found myself doing that. <laughs> I've done it now, and never again. There you go. So you saw it here. Never ask about it again. Uh, so you and you and your co-director Betsy West, you've done a number of films together. Now you did uh, RGB and then uh, AFI Doc's favorite. My name is Polly Murray. Together, how did you guys meet? What is the like? What is it like having a co-director? Um, yeah, Betsy and I met working actually on a project about twelve years ago called Makers. That was this very ambitious, monumental project documenting the modern women's movement for which we interviewed a hundred groundbreaking still living women um, and created a video archive as well as uh, a documentary grew out of it. It was a, you know, it, it was kind of connected to some of the stuff that uh, obviously that we're doing now. Um, we worked together really nicely. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't like an idea like, oh, we're going to form a partnership and start making documentaries. Like that's actually what what actually happened was uh, or, uh, Justice Ginsburg had been one of the subjects in Makers. That had all happened in like the interview. Betsy had actually interviewed her in 2011. I interviewed her for a different project in 2013, and around the 2014 thing when the whole notorious RBG. Uh, blew up on the internet. We were just like, wow, someone should make a documentary about Justice Ginsburg, and why shouldn't it be us? So it was really a result of doing that one project together, and it worked out really well. And so we said, let's keep. And we're, we both come from the broadcast news world, so um, although we've both also been in the doc space for for a period of time, also, but we bring with us the broadcast news sensibility of. We're pretty organized. We work pretty quickly. We're not like, you know, there are doc people that the process is like they interview like 800 people and then think like, oh, what should we do now? Like most of the people, you know, that we interview end up being in the film. Like we're, we're, we, have a, we have a way we work and it seems to, and we also really want to tell stories that we think people would like to watch. Like, the, the funness of it all is part of what attracts us to, to subject matter. We like stuff that's important and enlightening, but we also want something that you can really, that feels like a good viewing experience. For yeah, viewing. I mean, it, it's, such a, it's such a delight to watch this movie. Um, and one of the things that I think is, you know, always kind of interesting with documentary filmmakers is whether or not they choose to include kind of the, like, warts and all stuff. Um, you know, she, you talk about how, you know, she was kind of, she would say things about women that weren't necessarily kind, and then same with, like, gay people. What, why did you decide to include that stuff? In? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it just seemed like an interesting story. I mean, conflict is always a little good for story, and in terms of Julia's evolution, 
you know, on the gay rights question, like it's kind of just what you're looking for when you're putting a narrative together. Like, oh, you know, here's somebody who starts out, uh, you know, not too surprisingly, I'm sorry to say, in the 70s, who starts out homophobic, um, then has a very personal experience when a close friend, her attorney, gets sick with AIDS, becomes supportive of him, and like, you know, makes such a change that she's publicly out there speaking out uh, for gay rights and AIDS research, which I think for people today, it's maybe a little hard to understand what a big deal that was. Yeah. Like, that put us from 1988. Yeah, that's huge. People were not talking publicly. Celebrities, you know, that, that happened later. Celebrities were not talking publicly in support of people with AIDS in 1988. Certainly someone like Julia Child, whose audience was not coastal liberals, but middle America. Right. And well, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's always important to see people change, you know, in, in documentaries or anything really, just because it's, it's important for us to see that, you know, we're flawed and we can, right. we can change. Right. Um, so one of the other thing that's really pleasurable about your film is the music. So uh, I, you, we were talking earlier, you said that you actually helped select some of the music. What about the score? Like, how did, how did it all come together? Yeah, so we were thrilled to, that uh, the composer, Rachel Portman, agreed to be our composer for this movie. Um, we had the idea pretty early on that we wanted a narrative film composer to, to compose the music because we wanted to give it that sort of big movie feel. Uh, Rachel was incredible. She was a delight to work with. It was kind of different than other uh, composing experiences that we've had, where she worked very quickly, starting once we had a cut of the film. Um, she watched the film, and then we had like this three-hour session where she went through scene by scene, asking us to come up with words to describe what feeling we were trying to create. In the, so we and we were like, yeah, yeah, like you know, uh, prickly, uh, you know, joyous, uh, turned on, um, you know, dripping, uh, you know, climbing, chill. like we're just like screaming out words, like That's a great, game show. Yeah. I was like, wh as when, when we got off the call, I said, Betsy, what was that? Like what, <laughs> like what, what was the process? I don't understand. And within two weeks, Rachel gave us cues, you know, the individual songs for like half the film, each one like perfectly evoking the mood that we wanted the scene wow. to have. So it's like, a, and she uh, d d didn't uh, often composers sort of computer generate. She actually didn't. She played piano and actually sang what she, and then she would give us a list of like, oh, this is going to be clarinets. This is going to be star. I'm like, okay. In one case, um, from the early, there's a part that's the early PBS years that we liked her singing so much that we said, can you just say this? She's going, um, I can't remember what instrument she meant that to be, but we just said, like, we, you know, we actually, what's that, what's the vocal? Like, leave that as the vocal. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much. I, I really wish we had more time to talk. Uh, you've been great. Thank you so much. And thank you for bringing your film. Uh, let's have a round of applause. Thank, thank you very much. much. Opens, opens in LA this weekend, please tell your friends. Yes, please tell your friends. Do you guys have a hashtag or a website or anything to promote? Hashtag Julia Movie. There you go. Uh, and we have a hashtag, hashtag AFI Fest. Please uh, post all about our films, post about this film, and vote on your way out. So thank you all so much.